today i am going to discuss about the seventh class soil studies delhi sultanates delhi sultanates they ruled the india from 13th century to 16th century in delhi sultanate there are the mainly five dynasties are there in the delhi sultanates these five dynasties are the the first dynasty is the slave dynasty the second dynasty is the khilji dynasty the third dynasty is the tughlaq dynasty the fourth dynasty is sayyid dynasty the fifth one is the lodi dynasty these five dynasties they ruled the india from 13th century to 16th century before going to discuss about these rulers these famous rulers we must know what is history history means history is a record of the past factual events past factual events means in the past what real incidents real events occurred in the past those events were recorded and those events were written in the history by studying history we can know about those real events real incidents what happened in the past in the same way how the people lived in the past also by studying history we can know and also what type of socio cultural changes occurred in the past the people which type of culture they followed which type of things they used in the past which type of administration is there in the past how the kings they administered how they ruled which type of economic economic activities are there in the past by studying history we can know clearly about those things and also studying history is also very essential for the all the citizens to become a good citizens the people they must study the history it is essential for the good citizenship to study the history by studying history only the people they will become as a good citizens so studying history is a very very important for the people to become as a good citizens what type of sources are there to write the history what are the sources for the history on those days there are the two types of sources are there to write the history the first one is the archaeological sources the second one is the literary sources in archaeological sources are the there are the three types of archaeological sources are there artifacts and monuments and rock edicts artifacts means they used the toys tools ornaments how the people they used on those days which type of ornaments they used which type of tools they used which type of toys they they used on those days by studying these ornaments tools they wrote the history monuments the second source is the monuments forts how the kings they constructed on those days forts which type of places they used which type of temples they constructed by studying these things they wrote the history rock edicts on those days they they carved the rocks they carved on the temple walls they carved the inscriptions they constructed the pillars by studying those inscriptions rock edicts historians they wrote the history literary sources literary sources means on those days there are the epics were there and also poems were there so many foreign travelers they wrote their journey and also so many folk arts were there on those days so many poems were there on those days by studying these things these literary sources the historians they wrote that history history was divided into three periods ancient history medieval history modern history up to 8th century this period is called as ancient history or ancient period 8th century to 18th century this period is called as a medieval history or median medieval period 18th century onwards that period is called as a modern history or modern period during the 10th century delhi was ruled by the tomara rajputs tomara rajputs they built the 
Delhi or Delhi Kapura. Delhi Kapura is also called as a Delhi. During 10th century, Chahmanas for the local powers. Chahmana, Chahmanas of Ajmer, they defeated the Tamara Rajputs. Tamara Rajputs were overthrown by the Chahmanas of Ajmer. So Delhi Kapura, it came under the control of the Chahmanas. During the Chahmanas rule, Muhammad Ghori, he invaded on the India. Muhammad Ghori, he invaded on the Pridhira Chauhan 1191 AD. This was the first Tarain war. In the first Tarain war, Pridhira Chauhan, he defeated the Muhammad Ghori. But once again, Muhammad Ghori, he invaded on the India. 1192 AD, in the second Tarain war, Muhammad Ghori defeated the Pridhira Chauhan. The Delhi Kapura, Delhi came under the control of the Muhammad Ghori. Muhammad Ghori, he started his ruling, but after his death, his slave, Kutubuddin Aibak became the ruler of India in 1206 AD. But Dilika, Dilika or Dilikapura, it was became a commercial center during the Tamara Rajputs and Chahmanas. Dilhi, it was gone under the control of the Kutubuddin Naibak after the death of the Mahmud Ghori. 1206 AD, Kutubuddin Naibak became the ruler of the India. Slave dynasty, it is also called as a Mamluk dynasty. In slave dynasty, a few rulers are there. The first ruler was the Kutubuddin Naibak. After the death of the Muhammad Ghori, Kutubuddin Naibak came to the power. He established the slave dynasty in 1206 AD. His capital was the Lahore. After Kutubuddin Naibak, there came to the power Il Tutmish. Il Tutmish, he expanded the kingdom and also he was also called as a real founder of the slave dynasty. After Il Tutmish, Sultana Razia came to the power. After Sultana Razia, Balban came to the power. After Balban, Kaikabadu and Kaimur came to the power during the Kaikabadu and Kaimurs. The slave dynasty came to the end. Sultana Raja, she was the first woman ruler of India. She was the daughter of the Yilted Mish. Sultana Raja, when she became the ruler of the India, she faced the main problem from the 40 nobles. The 40 nobles were called as a Chahal Gani. The Chahal Gani was formed by the Yilted Mish during his rule. He has no confidence in the Turkish nobles, so that's why any time the Turkish nobles may overthrow from the kingdom and they may attack on him and they occupy the kingdom, so that's why Yildut Mish is scared about them, so that's why his faithful slaves, 40 faithful slaves, he formed and he maintained these 40 faithful slaves called as Chahalgani. He formed them to protect him, to protect his kingdom. He appointed the 40 faithful slaves in main position, in officially highly positions he appointed. They, during the Yildut Mish period, they were very trustworthy. And they protected him, they protected, protected his kingdom also. But after the death of the Yildut Mish, they became a notorious and they integrated against the Razia Sultana and Balban also. After slave dynasty, they came to the power 
Kilji dynasty. The Kilji dynasty was founded by the Jalaluddin Kilji. Jalaluddin Kilji was assassinated by his son-in-law Alauddin Kilji. Alauddin Kilji, he assassinated Jalaluddin Kilji and he came to the power. Alauddin Kilji implemented the market reforms to control the prices and also implemented the branded horses method. Well trained horses he gave the stamp to them and also implemented the standing army. Well trained standing army and also he paid to the salaries in cash to the soldiers. And also Alauddin Kilji he conquered the so many places. He attacked on the North India and also he conquered the Ranatambur, Malwa, Gujarat, Chittor, these places were conquered by the Alauddin Kilji. And also Alauddin Kilji, in northern India, nearly so many places were conquered by the Alauddin Kilji and he tried to occupy the southern India also. He sent his commander, army commander Malik Kafur. He sent to the south India. He also implemented the spy system also.